How often should you retrain your machine learning models? In this video, I will show you our strategy to get the best results with minimal effort. Hi there, I'm Cody Fernandez, father of one boy, one dog, and hundreds of machine learning models, and welcome to another AI shot. In this one, I will answer one of the common questions that uh, people ask us, which is how often you should retrain your machine learning models. And as with many of the questions that we answer here, there is no one fits all answer. So I won't tell you like every week, every day, every month, wherever, because there is no clear response. And that is actually what makes these kind of questions interesting. But there is a you know thinking process that you can take in order to reach to the right answer for your specific problem. And that is what I'm going to provide you today. So the, our strategy to reach to the best results in terms of retraining machine learning mode with minimal effort, okay? And basically you will ask me, you know, Kelvin, if machine learning models do not get rotten, if they do not degrade over time, how is that I need to retrain them? Well, maybe you may remember from one of our previous uh, videos, what is machine learning and how it can transform your business, that I said that, you know, there is this misunderstanding of machine learning models that people think they keep learning over time as they get more data. That's not necessarily true. That only happens if you keep training them, okay? So the, the training and the prediction happens in two stages and you need to keep training in order for these models to, to keep improving. So as you get more data and data with the, with the feedback loop that you are creating here on your business process, you need to constantly uh, retrain the model so it can gain more experience by getting more, more experience, improve its performance. And maybe you can think, you may think, you know, I am retraining the model and I'm not seeing any changes or any improvements on performance. And that could be good too, because you are still, you are making your model aware of the changes on the domain or the new changes on the domain. So even if the performance doesn't improve over time, as long as your, as your model knowledge doesn't get outdated, that's good. And that's a reason why you will need to retrain in case you're working on a domain that ha that changes over time that is not static, okay? So uh, if you want to know more about machine learning, about AI and how to implement it in business, I will leave a link below with all our online courses. They all have free previews so you can start learning on AI and you can start adopting it on your business. So let me give you our three strategies for, or the three potential strategies to retrain your machine learning models. The first one, the first strategy is the simplest one is you never retrain them, okay? Then as surprising as, as this can sound, as this may sound, a lot of people just do that, and a lot of our clients just, they ask us for a model, we train all our data, and they never retrain it. Well, because maybe the data acquisition, the data collection part was a static one, was, you know, they just collected data to get a model and then the model will survive over time, but they don't keep collecting data. So in this case, it's like the kind of situation when, when you will never retrain the model. That's not necessarily bad. It's actually the, the main advantage is that it is super simple and you don't need to support any training infrastructure. So if you're not a technology oriented company, that could be a good option for you. The main disadvantage here is that if you're targeting a dynamic environment, you know, an environment that is constantly changing and the reality is changing, you won't be able to adapt to those new realities with this static model. And you will see that the model will start to degrade. It doesn't mean that the code itself, that the model itself, it's uh, it's getting damaged. It's just that it was trained for a context that is not relevant nowadays. In the same way that maybe what you learned on college 10, 20 years ago is not relevant anymore because technologies have shifted, because the market has shifted and that's all. So you keep improving your self-learning over time, right? So that's the main, the main disadvantage here. So what is the second strategy? The second strategy is just training and a fixed frequency, okay? For example, you train every day, every week, every month, every quarter, every year. Okay, and this will depend on how much data you can collect over time, how long does it take to train the model, how much impact does it has on your infrastructure, okay? There, so there are some pros on this approach. The main one is that it's still, you know, it's, I believe it's, it's a good trade-off between a simple method, something that you can implement and that will have um, non-predictable uh, results, okay? And uh, still, you will keep the model up to date over time. What is the main con, the main disadvantage of this strategy is that uh, sometimes you will be training the model without any actual need because maybe you didn't get more data, because maybe the domain didn't shift it. So you are spending more money on retrainings that maybe you will need if the model wasn't great or wasn't hurt at this time. Okay. So it can get expensive, especially if you are going cloud-based or with any external infrastructure that is not 
um, a fixed one that you already have uh, in-house. So that's why what brings us to the third strategy, which is um, you dynamically train your model as the performance of that model gets compromised. Okay. So when you see the model is getting hurt, you retrain the model. This can be manually done or this can be an automated process that you have there with your MLOps teams that put these in place. And the main pro is that you only retrain when it is needed. So if at some point, you know, there was a drastic change, such as, I don't know, COVID or whatever, there was a war or whatever, then the, the world changed, you detect your model stopped working well, or there was a new competitor, then you retrain the model today. And if the world changes tomorrow, you retrain it tomorrow. And if it never changes it again, then you don't train it again. So you, um, you, you save some resources there. There are many disadvantages with this model. And in general, if you are watching this video, I will say this model is, this strategy is kind of overkill and I do not advise it for most of the companies out there that are starting to embrace AI, okay? Because it is too complex to implement, it is too subjective and operationally it's it, it's very complex. So um, why? Because it's quite, it's kind of subjective to know if the model was actually degraded or not over time. So maybe the results got worse, but was it because you are facing a more difficult customer base on this cycle? Or was it because, um, I don't know, the data was more complex on this other iteration? So there can be many reasons why the model degraded uh, for a bit. Sometimes, you know, what you are measuring is a short-term performance metrics that is not having impact in the long-term outcomes of the model. So actually getting to a single number that tells you how good or bad is your current model is not trivial sometimes, so that you will get biased by small um, differences, relative differences on new trends on data, and you will need to wait a long time until you can actually decide if that was the case or not. Okay, so for most cases, I think this is just too overkill and I wouldn't go in, in this way. If you like this video so far, remember to like and subscribe to, to our channel. So let's go to my actual strategy, the one that I tend to implement most of the time. I either ask the business what is the seasonal periods of this business. So if I know that the business is uh, moves over a yearly basis or over a weekly basis, I try to follow those, um, those periods and retrain during those periods. Or if I have the time to do this experiment that I will show you now, I conduct it, which is basically I start with a simulation of what will have happened if I retrain my model in a very fast, with a very a high frequency. Okay, let's say I retrain the model every day. Okay, and I simulate what will happen in production if I retrain my model every day, and that gives me a performance. And I guess that will be like the best performance I could get if I had infinite resources to retrain my model constantly. Then I start to double um, the, the period for the trainer. So I, I have the, the frequency. So instead of a day, let's say we train every two days. Then let's say we train every week, every month, every quarter, every year. So I, incre I, I, I lower the frequency of retraining. And I see where the performance starts to degrade, okay, over time. So that will give me the point where the model starts to get outdated. Before this point, let's say that point was every six months. Before this point, there is no reason for retraining your model because the knowledge was valid. You will be just expending more resources. After this point, you need to choose the, the, the point where the model degrades enough. So there is a good trade-off between the cost of retraining your model and how much is the difference with the profit you are losing for that performance degradation, okay? It sounds kind of complex, but it's just basically a math number. If the model degrades by this amount, uh, how much money I'm losing? And how much does it cost to retrain the model? It's that simple. And you just need to choose the right trade-off there. If it is kind of subjective, if you cannot come to answer, just go to the point where it starts to degrade and that will lead you uh, the, the final answer to this question. So again, I hope you like this video. Let me uh, tell me in the comments if you use any other strategy to retrain your models. I, I'm sure there are many other ones out there uh, in the industry. Just tell me in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and activate the notification of the season. Bye bye.